see what we can do here. gig here was at the, the football park, 1990 I think. Does it bring back a lot of memories? Oh yeah, driving around it's like, whoa, oh, it's really familiar but it's just different, you know, because yeah. obviously things have changed over the years. And so, yeah, but it's all kind of familiar, you know what I mean? Yeah. Lots of memories. Lots of memories of driving a lot of these roads that you came on. Yeah. Yeah. I read uh, an interview a long time ago, you know, like when uh, when you started out um, and uh, it was an interview with Pete, I think, uh, where he said that uh, at the time you were, you know, by far and miles away the best guitarist in Dunfermline, you know, so... Well, there was a couple of other guitar players that, that were in Dunfermline that were pretty good. Um, the, and the guy that used to play for Nazar, well, actually it was the Shedez at the time, he was he was real good. Uh, Pi Brady, his name was, and um, he liked to sort of basically concentrate on his university studies. And uh, I knew Pete and Dan because we we played in the same ballroom. You know, I was with the resident band in the ballroom, and uh, they, we knew each other because they played on one stage and we played on the other stage. Mm. So I knew them pretty well, and. Uh, Used to walk up the road with them, have a fish supper, and, that, and always spoke about, you know, like trying to do something together one day. And um, when Pi decided to concentrate on his university, they asked me yeah. if I wanted to join the band. I said, sure, yeah, sure, but we have to do originals. Yeah, <laughs> so not, you're the... not just going to be a cover version band, you know. Yeah, and we won't do covers, but. But also, we need to do originals. Yeah. So I did the early, 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 early demos for them and, and the band, and we started writing our own stuff, and, and it went on from there. Mm. And we got management. And I was wondering, what what's the main uh, influence on you guitar-wise in that time? Because at that we, time, we talk it was the late sixties, really, yeah. wasn't it? it was sort of just after the Beatles. And Britain went into like a sort of kind of blues phase where blues was very popular, like John Mayall, yeah. Alexis Corner, people like that, you know, and uh, they had Clapton and Peter Green playing for them, you know. Mm. So you heard, you heard about those uh, those players before you joined oh, Nazareth? Yeah. Oh yeah, I mean, I, I was a music fan, mm. <laughs> and buy albums and buy the Melody Maker and you know see yeah. what was going on in London because London was like the centre and we were kind of 400 miles north in the sticks. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> so how would you learn to play guitar here? I mean, did you learn by yourself or did you have some training? Listen to records. Yeah. Listen to records. You know, mm. hit and miss, trial and error. Yeah. Eventually, I, you know, I got some. I got a book with chords and that because I was mainly interested in being able to like play the chords for the songs yeah. you know and you're talking standards and yeah. you know the platter and Elvis and yeah. all yeah. these sort of first generation of rock yeah. from the 50s late 50s 
into the shadows and Cliff Richard and then I started to get more interested in, you know, trying to play instrumentals like Hank Marvin was doing and yeah. with the shadows, you know. Yeah. So my guitar style started to evolve. Firstly, from a rhythm point of view, I was yeah. the first band I was in, I was a rhythm guitar player because the lead guitar player left and the rhythm guitar player said, well, he's left, I'm going to be the lead guitar player now and you're coming into the band, you're the rhythm player. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like second class citizen, you know. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, um, eventually I ended up in my own band, a band called the Mark V. Yeah. And... Um, we started to play all the, the early Beatles stuff and Rolling Stones and early blues. And, and what what sort of guitar do you play? The first guitar you used to play with? The first the first good guitar I had was a, a, a Gibson three three five, semi semi acoustic electric. Yeah. Wish I still had it. Yeah. Great guitar. What model year was that? That was the late fifties. Wow. Fifty eight, fifty nine when I first got on a. And a band, and before that, I had a Hofner Club, right. which was like a, a Les Paul, but made by a company called Hofner. Right. And um, today, they're probably worth a fortune. You know, yeah. these real old Hofner from the fifties. Yeah. In fact, the slide guitar I play is from the fifties. Yeah. It was a, a Hofner, you know, lap steel. Yeah, that's the green one, right? The little green thing, yeah. And it, it was, um, Pete and Darrell found it in Edinburgh and they bought it for me. It was about 20 quid at the time or something, you know, and they said, look what we found. Yeah. And they gave me it, you know, and I've still got it. That's great, yeah. You know, it sounds yeah. unbelievable. Well, you know, I, I, I had a 335 and, and the band I was in um, broke up and I didn't have a gig and I needed the money so I sold my 335 and then about six months later another band asked me to join them and I thought, I need a guitar. And uh, I always wanted a Les Paul ever since I saw them. It was a Les Paul Custom Black, oh, it was a great guitar. And I had that up until about 2008, and I had to sell it to pay the tax man. Yeah. That's a, so, bye-bye, uh, you know, I mean, you can't, I can't it's, a, it's a tool, you know what I mean? I, I'm not that attached to guitars anymore, you know. Yeah. They're not, you know, people or pets or anything like you know. Yeah. They're just a, you know, a guitar, and it's a tool, and uh, one guitar, one Les Paul, now, for me, Pretty much the same as another one, you know. Yeah. It's like I was, I was talking to people last night, and they were saying, "How do you get that sound out of it?" And, you know. I said, "Look, Les Paul's guitarist, ninety percent of it is the the player, yeah. of the sound and the tone. You know, it's mainly the player." Yeah. You no, know, an engineer once told me in London. They said that you know he was working with a band, and the the guitar player said to him, "I want to sound like Jimi Hendrix." Yeah. And the engineer said to him, Roy Thomas Baker, yeah. said to him, well, play it like him. <laughs> I'll get you the sound, yeah. you play it like him. Yeah. You're using like a, quite the commercial, uh, you know, pickups? The standard pickups standard. that come with a guitar. Yeah. I, yeah, I was in a phase where I, you know, was changing pickups and everything, but I didn't really, you know, come to the, conclu I come to the conclusion that it wasn't really making that much difference. It still sounded like me, you know? Yeah. So I, I've given up on that. Now I just, you know, the get, whatever the guitar comes with, I just leave it. Are you using some uh, effects? To... <laughs> the more effects, the more cables, the more tone disappears right. of the guitar. You begin to lose the quality of the sound of the guitar itself. And I want, to, I want people to hear the guitar yeah. as well as the amp and myself, so I, I try to limit the amount of effects. I've got a tuner, mm -hmm. and that goes into a distortion pedal made by Fulton called the Plimsoll, mm -hmm. which is just brilliant. Great, great pedal, great for distortion. And and from there it goes into a, a digital delay for, for, for echo. Okay. And that's it. In terms of uh, studio play, you know, like what, what's your uh, view on that when it comes to effects and the sort of. Well, I'm playing in the studio. Yeah. 
Again, I try to keep it relatively simple and then, you know, record the guitar, you know, basically into the amplifier through a good mic and into a good preamp and record it pretty pure. Yeah. And any effects that I want, I'll use plugins. Right. Because they're so sophisticated now and they sound great. Mm -hmm. So even then, it's sparingly, you know. I like to record um, my main rhythm parts clean and over with overload as well. So, you know, I get definition and I get the, the distortion that I want. What sort of strings do you use in your guitars? Well, anything that's available, really. Yeah? I'm not, I'm not that particular. Dean Markley, Dean Daddario, yeah. whatever's at hand. Yeah. And you know, and I use 10s down to 406 okay. for my main guitars. Mm. Amplification is another interesting thing for guitar players, obviously, and uh, I was wondering, you know, like how long you've been using Marshall uh, as amps on stage and... Since, like the, late, since the late 60s. Yeah. Since pretty much I could afford one. <laughs> yeah. You know, no, 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 Les Paul, Marshall, that's it. Especially for live work. I've used Les Pauls and Marshalls pretty much all my career. Mm. Love them. Can you remember the first time you heard or you know saw a, a Marshall amp? I was amp? aware of yeah. Marshalls, Marshall amps. Probably a, there was a group, I think they were called Painter. Just um, a little bit before the, I saw The Who with them and Jeff Beck had, had, had them as well at Marshalls. And Jeff Beck had a 200 watt Marshall, what they call a Marshall Major. And he was just getting the most ridiculous sound out of it. Yeah. Ridiculous, fantastic, and ever since I, I, I saw him playing, oh, that was the that was the combination I wanted. You know, I wanted Marshall and uh, you know Les Paul. It's mm. pretty much hard to beat. Yeah, especially live work in the studio. I'll use anything that's available. Really, right. small amps sound sometimes sound just as good. Yeah. Playing through that Marshall stack in the seventies, was that uh, what sort of setup you, did you use in the uh, in that time? I used to use uh, an Echoplex yeah. and um, a phaser that was made by Gibson Maestro, Maestro phaser, one of the earliest ones, and a Univibe. Just depended on the song. You know? mm. Like I say, I'm not a fan of using a lot of effects. Mm. Yeah. But yeah, and, and in, in terms of uh, servicing the uh, the amps, you talk yeah, about my Marshalls always went back to the factory, and really? they were serviced by Marshall. Yeah, and they looked after them, and uh, all through my touring days with Nazareth. Yeah, yeah, they went back to the factory regularly, and at the end of a tour, and they would service them. Yeah. So did you go there personally to meet? No, you my, road, my road crew would yeah. take them up there. You know, take them up. And get them service and bring them back. Yeah. But um, they were always great, the great company and really looked after us, you yeah. know. But Jim Marshall obviously just passed away a little time ago, so... Yeah, I can't, it's a shame, you know. He definitely changed the sound of music, really. <laughs> you know what I mean? Or guitar players especially. But um, no, I went up, we went, we went up to see him and we had lunch with him one day and yeah, really nice English gentleman, you know. Uh, no airs or graces, he just was proud of his product and happy that we were using them, you know. 